right, boys and girls, we are back with another edition of the Ben Dominich podcast brought to you by Fox News. You can check out all of our podcasts at foxnewspodcasts.com. I hope that you will rate, review, and subscribe to this one and share it with your friends if you like it. Today, we have two interviews uh, with you uh, that are both very topical. Uh, They are conversations about what we're seeing going on in the world today, particularly in Shanghai, China, uh, the most cosmopolitan of the Chinese Communist Party dominated cities, uh, and one that has a population almost the size of Texas that has been under lockdown in these past several weeks, thanks to a zero COVID regime uh, that the Chinese leadership has adopted under Xi Jinping, uh, one that has led to frightening images and videos uh, from the city uh, and really a disturbing uh, level of backlash from the authoritarian forces uh, that are making this policy happen. First, we'll have a conversation with Senator Bill Haggerty of Tennessee. He is the junior Republican senator there, uh, recently elected relatively. Uh, He served as the ambassador to Japan under Donald Trump and is very familiar with the Asian region. He has, in a short amount of time, become a very prominent voice on Capitol Hill regarding foreign policy and national security as someone who is a critic of the Biden administration's approach. Then we'll have a conversation with Martin Gurry. He is a former CIA analyst specializing in the relationship of politics, global media, and propaganda. He wrote The Revolt of the Public and the Crisis of Authority in the New Millennium, a book published back in 2014 and updated in 2018, which foreshadowed many of the political developments that we've seen, both with the rise of Donald Trump uh, and the Brexit experience in the UK. He analyzes media from a perspective that I find very interesting and is currently a uh, research fellow at the Mercatus Center at George Mason University. First up, a conversation with Senator Bill Haggerty. Senator Haggerty, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Ben, I'm delighted to be with you. Thanks. I wanted to talk to you about a number of different issues, but first I wanted to ask you about your reaction to the scenes that have been uh, really taking fire on social media here in the West over the past couple of weeks from Shanghai and the consequences of China's zero COVID policy there, which has resulted in some, some pretty stunning and disturbing video Tell me a little bit about your reaction to that and what it says about both uh, Xi's regime and their zero COVID policy in terms of uh, the actual practice of its enforcement. Well, Ben, I think what you see, and I think every American, I hope, is seeing this, is what happens when you have an authoritarian regime take complete and total control. Uh, This is a direction that the Biden administration sometimes seems to want to move you know, more, more central government control, more authoritarianism. And the result of this and the screaming and the wailing that you hear across the, the skies of Shanghai is just, uh, just, just amazingly disturbing to, to everyone that hears it. But I hope that, uh, that, that, that a message is taken from that, um, that central authoritarian control is not good for the human uh, spirit. It's been, uh, you know, this, this example, I think, shows us that you allow central authoritarian control to take place like it has in Shanghai, you're going to get uh, terrible results in terms of repressing freedom, uh, subjugating people, and the the, the, the sounds across the the evening sky in Shanghai are are just so depressing. You know, there's there's a tug of war in terms of how to interpret this in the West, which is there are a lot of people who look to something like that and they say, isn't it frightening? Isn't it scary? You know, how powerful Xi's regime uh, really is. And yet the flip side of that is, isn't this actually kind of an indication of weakness on some level that, that they feel the need to engage in this type of, of behavior, behavior that the world knows to be based in, in falsehood, you know, of you yeah. know, the idea that, that there have been no COVID deaths for the last two years or so, you know, that you haven't, you know, that this has been a policy that works, et cetera. How should Americans interpret this as an indication of strength on the Chinese regime's part or fear that this is a regime that is actually perhaps weaker than we might have thought? Well, Ben, I'd start with the latter point because I think the regime is weaker. And the reports that I get out of China 
are you know, an economy that is much more frail than the numbers ever suggest. Uh, no one believes the numbers coming out of uh, China with respect to economic numbers. We know that the propaganda coming from China is enormous and constant. So there is a tremendous amount of weakness. The way they deal with it, though, is with this authoritarian control. And uh, it's, it, it's, again, whether it's their you know, digital social scoring mechanism, their tracking and surveillance that they constantly undertake against their own people, uh, the propaganda that is, that is constant coming from the central government, coming from their media arms, uh, coming from their diplomats around the world. Um, what we see is, uh, I think, uh, very much a sign of weakness. But again, they want to use authoritarian power and control mm -hmm. to keep in place a weak government. You know, I was in the audience at the America First Policy Institute when you had uh, occasion to speak to the developments in Ukraine at that point, uh, which mm -hmm. have obviously continued in the past several weeks. Uh, there's definitely a strain of argument that says that the, the West should not be distracted by Ukraine. Our long-term challenge is uh, the Chinese Communist Party and their uh, ambitions as it relates to Taiwan and other parts of uh, uh, the globe. In terms of what you see going on in the Ukraine conflict and uh, Russia's backing from China, is it fair to call it a proxy conflict? And do you believe that there are certain things that need to be achieved, whatever the ultimate outcome, in terms of sending a lesson to the world uh, about America's role in it going forward? Well, I, I think we have to view every confrontation in, in this sense when you're dealing with Russia, with China, is a proxy for their view of the world. And if we don't recognize that, we're being naive. Uh, they, they are certainly looking at this in that manner. And I think what we're seeing uh, is, is a complete failure of the Russian system. You know, they thought that they could step in and I think uh, take, take very decisive action very swiftly. That's not been the case. What we've seen is institutional rot within the Russian military. Uh, I'm sure the corruption inside the military is, is, the, you know, is, is the cause for a good portion of the failures that you've seen. And China, you know, I think, has miscalculated greatly when they decided to acquiesce and allow Putin to take the moves that he's made uh, as they continue, as China continues to acquiesce and, and I think in a number of ways support what Putin is doing, they're aligning themselves with the pariah of the century. And if you think about it from the perspective of face and reputation, uh, China is going to do serious damage to its reputation on a global basis the more it persists in supporting, backing, or aligning itself in any manner with Vladimir Putin. Uh, the fact that this continues to drag on, I think, is bad for China's reputation. It's, um, again, something that's going to be forcing Putin to, I'm sorry, that's going to be forcing Xi Jinping to recalculate his posture vis-a-vis -vis Putin. I think we in the West should be doing everything we can to force a recalculation. That was my message uh, when I was in Japan last week, is that our alliance needs to be stronger than other, ever. We need to be continually forcing the CCP to recalculate their posture in Asia with respect to the Taiwan Strait. Uh, this is something that uh, we need to take very seriously. What lessons coming out of the Ukraine conflict can be applied to Taiwan, uh, both from the American perspective in terms of what material and resources we can offer to support, uh, but also from the Taiwanese perspective of what they ought to understand as their role? Obviously, you know, so much of this has been uh, dependent and changed by the fact that Ukraine was willing to fight to such a degree for themselves in ways that American intelligence uh, did not anticipate, or another in a long series of failures, I might add. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, and, uh, and that seems to me to be something that ought to be a lesson uh, for the Taiwanese as well in terms of their role. Is that right? Been very perceptive question, and um, I think we, we both know the answer. If, if there's a lesson to be learned here, and there's an obligation on our side to do it. Let's step up, let's provide the material, the training, let's make Taiwan, the prickliest porcupine that, that China could ever imagine. Uh, they need in, in Taiwan, uh, not only the equipment, the material, but the, the training. And I've seen the, the benefit of joint exercises. I've seen the benefit of uh, engagement. We need to do more of it and we need to make Taiwan as strong as we possibly can. And let's do that beforehand. So we actually have the ability to deter uh, 